So we are one hour late. I am so sorry. It's 2 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, normally I do Wired Lady TV at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesdays. But I was out and couldn't get back in time. So we are here. Thank you, Clarice, for messaging me to make sure everything was okay. I really appreciate that. And uh, today we're just going to be troubleshooting some ideas because on Saturday we're doing the just uh, Let's Get Wired episode making skeletons. And so I'm going to troubleshoot some ideas on how to make some skull heads. So that's the plan today. And um, what I'm going to do is show you the project for next uh, Saturday. And then also we're going to troubleshoot some ideas. Hey Amber, how are you? Sorry I'm late. I hope you guys saw in the community section that I was going to be late. And um, sometimes we just can't control things that come up. So Peggy, yay, awesome. And uh, luckily these days when people are late for things, we always have our um, technology, our phones, our internet to keep us busy in the meantime. So hopefully you guys were keeping busy with other projects. Peggy, you have your hands full with your nephew, of course. And so there, here I am now. So we're gonna troubleshoot some ideas. Let me flip the screen. We're gonna just Put the turn that around. I'm hope we're not too late for Mustafa and Alman because and Neil because they're probably sleeping right now. So sorry about that. But let's go ahead and bring this over here. He fell down the stairs. Ouch! Oh no! I hope he's okay. Hi Terry. That's oh did he, I hope he didn't hurt himself, uh, Peggy. That's uh, that's really bad. Yeah, yeah, that happens, eh? So these are the ones we're going to be doing something similar to the skeletons on Saturday at the Let's Get Wired. Mustafa, you're here. You're not asleep. Uh, thank you so much for holding out for um for the live stream. I appreciate that. That's great. And Amanda, almost missed me. Yeah, well, I'm an hour late, so sorry about that, but uh, better late than never, right? So I wanted to show you some things. This, I actually came across this when I was looking for skull ideas. This one I made for my friend Renee a couple of years ago. The, it's like the skull candy thing. And so what I have is, I'll show you the pair I made for her. And um, I might try to do a wire skull as an alternative for the um, for the for these little skull beads because probably a lot of you don't have skull beads. But these uh, these were the earrings I made for my friend Renee a few years ago. So it's like a skull with the little flower uh, beads and stuff. And then, uh, Becca, we're on, yes. So this was just to show you the size. I actually had them listed on Etsy and realized they take far too long to make to actually sell them. So I don't sell these anymore. They're more for fun. So I'll probably do a tutorial at some point how to make these ones. And, uh, but then, so these were the ones I, I gave to uh, Renee, my friend, and then this was one of the prototypes that I used to do that, so uh, to make those. So that was cool. And uh, is Clarice on? Clarice is here, yay, and Iris here, awesome. You guys are all hopping on. So yeah, so next Saturday we'll do the skeletons, and I just thought I'd show you a couple of the other fun skeletons that I did before too with, the, with kids. So this was made with plastic uh, cord. And sometimes you can find these type of skull beads in the dollar store in the Halloween section. So I had bought a bunch of them on a string, which was cool. Uh, you have an amazing talent lady. Aw, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. And in a pinch, you can use a wooden bead and just draw a skull face on it with um, Sharpie. So these were some other skeletons that I did. This is the same style we're doing on Saturday with the wire uh, base. And so for Saturday, all you're going to need is 20 gauge wire, uh, some seed beads, and then a skull a, a skull um, bead for the head but if you don't have a skull bead we'll make them out of wire so that's fine too so thought, what I thought I'd do today is just troubleshoot some ideas oh these were some other skull beads that I bought at Michael's so if you have a Michael's nearby you might be able to run out and get some skull beads so these ones you can buy large or small sizes they come in different colors so they're quite cute I think they're made out of a stone or something so this is this is probably like half an inch and these ones are about quarter inch. So these are really cool, these skull beads. And I bet you can get these on Etsy as well. You can probably order things like that on Etsy. And so what I think we're gonna do to start is I'm gonna get some wax paper just to cover my surface a little bit. And then I'm gonna to try to make some beads. So here's our wax paper. 
I have some Fimo. And if you don't have Fimo, I'm going to experiment with making my own modeling clay after. So what we're going to do is just take this. I'm from India 15. Could you please give a startup business advice? Wow, that's a big, big topic about business advice. But um, I actually started a Facebook group a while back for sellers. Called, it was called the Handmade Sell, uh, Jewelry Sellers Club. And my friend Dave took over the group. And I think, I forget at the I think he changed the name of the group to the Etsy sellers advice or something. Anyways, he's got some great tips if you want to sell on Etsy and start your own business selling online. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, good uh, tips for that from from him. His he's got a YouTube call a channel called um, Add to Cart. So definitely follow his YouTube channel. It's very very interesting. Uh, Mustafa says, I have successfully created a way to make uh, the wire twisting tool. Awesome. And I have posted photos to share in your... Okay, perfect. I'll check that out, Mustafa, to make the twisting tool. That's awesome. Yes, there's many ways to twist wire. wire and I know um, there is a tool that Beadalon makes, but there's certainly other ways you can make your own tool as well. So I can't wait to see it, Mustafa. That's awesome. I'll, I'll check that out after the live stream. You guys can hop over to Discord and go to the... Um, you, you, where did you say it? And share in this, uh, you, in the share your work section. Fantastic. That's great. And maybe what I'll do is I'll pull up the Discord link and I uh, have that. I'll just pull up the link and I'll put it in here. I'd started selling three months ago and I've not got an order till now. Okay. So Mustafa, where are you selling your work? Are you just selling on Instagram or where are you selling your work? I should be working at the same time. But what I'm trying to do is I'm actually going to try it for the skull beads. I thought it'd be fun to just roll this out a little bit. I think I'm going to try it that way. So we're going to roll it up on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, it's it's definitely a long process to try to um, sell your work online. And sometimes it's just a matter of finding your niche. And um, like for us on Etsy, it took us a couple of years to actually... Uh, find our niche on Etsy but once we found our niche which is in the wedding the wedding uh, sort of uh, milieu uh, then we did well so you really have to have a nice clear defined niche and a collection of products that are very consistent you know you don't want to have like random products that don't relate to each other so that's that's one big advice I would give you to find your niche so there's Paula. Hi, Paula. How are you? So now what I'm trying to do now is we're just going to make these beads here, which is like just a little skull bead. So I thought just to keep it simple, you could roll like a piece of the of the Fimo out like this. And then just let me get a knife because I think it's going to be better to cut with a knife. So I just have a knife here and we're just going to cut a couple of pieces and see. I'm just going to have a sip of coffee. I was out this morning so I didn't have my coffee and so I'm just having my coffee now and you never guess what I had for lunch. Can anyone guess what I had for lunch? It has something to do with Thanksgiving. It was pretty decadent so if you can guess what I had for lunch that would be hilarious. And some people that know me well know that I have a sweet tooth, so that's a hint. So we're just going to cut a couple of pieces, because if you want to do earrings, you want them to be more or less the same size, right? So you can cut a couple of pieces. Pasta, no. Tofurky, ew, no. That's so funny. Somebody posted, oh yeah, it was someone on my Instagram posted uh, her Thanksgiving meal, and she had tofurkey, and I... I said, I don't even know where to start with this post because uh, tofurkey is the most disgusting thing I've ever tried. But it, they may have improved it since I first tried it. I tried tofurkey when it first came out and it was horrible. It tastes like cardboard. We bought it and had it at the cottage one uh, Thanksgiving. This one's a little big. And so, uh, but it was, it was really, really nasty. So yeah, cranberry sauce. Nope, something sweet. It was something sweet that everybody has at, at Thanksgiving. So, because we had our Canadian Thanksgiving, of course. Pumpkin pie, yes, Amber wins the prize. Yes, I had pumpkin pie for lunch with coffee, which was amazing. So good, so, so good. Let me know in the comments if you like pumpkin pie. I love it. So now I'm just kind of playing around with this. I'm not doing anything super special with these, but the idea for the, for the, um, uh, blah, 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 um, skulls, sorry, is you want to get a, now a piece of wire 
I'm gonna get one a larger wire because I'd rather the hole be too large than too small. So we're just gonna go out here and straighten that out. Donuts, yeah, donuts are good too, but um, trouble with donuts, I, and it sounds kind of gross, but when I eat donuts, I burp that taste of donuts all day long. So I don't know what it is about donuts. Maybe it's because they're deep fried. So I try not to eat too many donuts. I made it from scratch without cinnamon. Okay for the pumpkin pie. You don't like cinnamon? So I'm going to stick, what you do is just take these and stick them on a wire. This is just to make your own skull bead. So we're just going to bring that down here. And these are like a very simple, simple shape. And you want to make sure it stays somewhat... Um, centered. So maybe I wasn't didn't do the best bet with the large uh, wire. You know, it seems a little bit thick. So this, I'm going to try to get a thinner, a thinner wire to put it on now because I found that's like 1.2 millimeters, which is about 16 gauge or something. Maybe it's, I don't know what it's 16. Anyways, this one's 18 gauge. So let's try this one and see. We'll just go on here. There's Marisa. Hello. Hello. I love cinnamon, but I'm allergic. Oh, you're allergic to cinnamon. Oh boy, wow, that's uh, that's really bad because cinnamon's in a lot of things like chai tea and and lots of uh, cinnamon raisin things and things. I guess you have to be very careful. So here, yeah, this works better just putting it on the 18 gauge wire. I'm trying to make something that's similar to these kind of skull beads, but they're gonna be very, very basic. So there's one. Okay, and you can shape it so it's a little more narrow at the bottom. You can definitely give it like a little bit of shape, like the skull, and then this one too. We can shape it out a bit. Like we can, you can do it like that's more of a kind of, um, how do you say, like a cylinder type of thing. And then you can also kind of just play around with it like this and just to get the shape. You can kind of bring it in a little bit. Like if you want it more like a skull shape, like this one here is, see it's a little more narrow at the bottom. So you could definitely go ahead and do that to make it, I think it'd be funner to make it a little more like skull shaped. So if we're gonna bring that one in here and then it's quite big at the top, right? So let's try the same thing with this one. We're gonna bring it in at the bottom. Otherwise it, I find it looks a little too rectangular. So we're gonna bring it in here as uh, I've heard cinnamon is good for the body when you have it in tea depends on which food you make yeah a lot of those a lot of those spices are really good for you like ginger and stuff like that too sort of because diffusing these essential oils okay interesting okay so here is like two ideas like this one's a little bit deformed maybe I didn't put enough uh femo on that one but now the idea is you're gonna have to kind of form like the eyes and stuff so I think for that I'll just take my thicker wire and then I'm going to bring this up here and then we're just going to do some little holes so let's just do some little holes and just want to like circle it out right so we're just going to circle it out oh I made a bit of a mistake but we're going to circle it out a little bit and yeah you can kind of like do them it's very soft, the female, so you're going to have a little bit of trouble getting them perfect, but it's okay. Just to give you an idea, and then probably a nose type of thing. You can do some kind of shape of a nose, and then after I'm going to bake it in the oven, and then the for the mouth, maybe do something. Actually, you know what I thought for the mouth? I'm going to just try something else because it's going to be really hard to get into that detail, so let me get some... The, uh, some other wire. I'm gonna get some. Uh, this, 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 I've been hurting. My throat hurts too. Yeah, that's this time of year, eh? And people are gonna start panicking about COVID. But uh, there's regular colds and regular flus that are going around now, now that we can't do anything about either. So now I'm gonna make a little tool to make the impressions in the mouth. So if I take this one and cut it, bend it at a little bit of an angle. Okay, and that'll be like a, maybe a cross there. And then make one with a slightly different angle. Okay, we're going to go to this one. And then bend it at a slightly smaller angle. Okay, like that. So what we have, make sure that's a nice, like, 
right angle bend. So you have a little tool that can make impressions in the femo. So now take this, okay, and just press that in here, one side, and press it in here, the other side, and then these sideways ones. You could just go, I don't know if I'm putting them in, but it's kind of cool. It kind of looks like a skull now. So there we go. Okay, my cousin posted pictures of her being at a big party and she's a nurse. Yeah, that is just not very responsible behavior. I'm really, uh, I completely um, nixed any kind of uh, holiday plans just, just for respect. You know, you just do what you can to um, do the social distancing stuff and that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty shocking that a nurse is doing that. There we go. So there, we're going to bring this around here and let's do the other one. Okay, so now we've got our tools. Awesome. And we're going to take this one and we'll do our eye first. Okay. I, I wanted to yell at her, but I didn't. Yeah. Hey, Joanna. Hey, Joanna. There we go. So we're going to go here and bring this around. Bring that around and do our eye. And then I'm going to bake them and we'll see what happens. They're pretty cool though. But the other thing I wanted to do is try to make my own modeling clay. Because if you don't have Fimo and if you don't have access to Fimo, it might be good to be able to make your own. So we're going to see what we can do for that after. I'm kind of liking these beads. But this, it's sculpty actually. It's not Fimo. It's very, very, very soft. So there we go. So there's that one. And then we'll do the the um, mouth again. So there, we're going to do one at the top, one here, okay? And then we're going to do the sideways lines. And after we can put a little bit of paint to almost like a kind of patina thing to bring out these lines. Okay, so guys, I'm going to go throw these in the oven for 15 minutes and then they can cook while I work on some other things. So let me just put these in the oven. So now we're back. <laughs> Any comments going on? Okay, not, oh yeah, 84 people invited. Oh my goodness, that's not even legal, I don't think. I have terracotta clay. Well, that kind of clay would be great too. Mm -hmm. Skulls are super cute, thank you. So the other idea I had was something my friend used to do. And honestly, I don't know if this is gonna work or not, but you get some flour and you get some white glue and she used to make her own clay with flour and white glue. So let's see if it's going to work. I think I'm going to need a little spoon. I have a spoon. And I'm just going to do it like here because I don't know how much of each thing to add. So, so this, is not, this is not wire related. But this is going to go... We're going to use this idea when we do our, our um, skeletons next uh, Saturday at noon. We're doing the just let's get wired. So let's just bring this in here. Might or might not work. So hopefully, whoa, this is going to be messy. Hopefully everybody has white glue and flour. This is just white flour, so it should work okay. But we're going to see if it, I've actually never tried this. So this might or might not work. My friend used to make this. And um, she used to make jewelry out of white glue and, um, and flour. So I should have probably asked her how she did it because I'm not 100% sure. It's like paper mache, exactly. But instead of doing, instead of putting water in the flour, you put glue. So whether it's going to work or not, we're going to see. But I'm thinking it might or might not. And maybe I should add... A little bit of water. You know what? I might add a little bit of water too because I think that this might not work just with glue. So let me just get 
Here's a little bit of water in there. There we go. We we'll just put a little bit of water and see. Okay, and polymer clay in India costs RS242. I don't know how much that is in U.S. funds. Do you know how much that is, uh, Mustafa, in U.S. funds? I'm not really sure. Now, this is starting to make some kind of dough. So let's see if it's actually going to be good to make the skulls. But the thing about this, it makes a nice, like, super hard dough. Let me remove this one. And I should probably dry my hand. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm all in pink today. I pulled out, um, I have a bunch of uh, shirts from my friend Allison that, that I have, and she... Um, they still smell like her laundry detergent, so I like to, I like to space them out and wear wear them when I can. But she, this one is, I put the one on this morning and it's bright pink. So I put on my bright pink pants, my bright pink shirt, and my bright pink sweater. So I'm all in pink today. So uh, a teaspoon, okay, three dollars and thirty-two cents. So for a package, that's probably about right. I think it's about the same as that here. So, so guys, this uh, it's coming along pretty well. My hand's a bit of a mess now because of that. I should probably be, like go wash my hands too. But this is the idea. So we all we did was we mixed white um, flour with white glue and a little bit of water. But you see, it makes a nice little dough. And the advantage is this is when it dries, it's going to air dry. And when it dries, it's going to be much more solid than uh, if you just added if you just added water because if you just added water to that it wouldn't be super super um uh solid like the adding the glue makes it very it'll it's going to dry like super hard i'm just not sure how much that you have to like add to it this is the part where you might have to experiment because if you put too much flour it's going to start to crack. So I think that's pretty good. So let me just clean this off. I'm going to actually just wipe this off and wash my hands and I'll be right back. You guys can just chat for a little minute. Okay, so I'm back. I just had to wash my hands. Okay. Uh, someone keeps pounding on our building. Oh no, wow, you guys are gonna be happy to move. Oh my goodness. Yeah, hopefully soon. I used to make cold porcelain clay, but this way, but you had to cook it. Okay, so I wonder, I wonder if you have to cook it. So Mustafa, do you think I should cook this? Because I could cook it. Like, and if I cook it, how long should I cook it? Maybe you're right. Maybe we should cook this one. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'll just um, maybe I'll try that. Once my femo's done, I'll stick this in this in the oven and cook it because it's still pretty sticky. It's still pretty sticky. And Mustafa, do you have a recipe for that? If you uh, if you've done this before, if you have a recipe, maybe you can share it. I'm looking at information, so okay, you can put a little oil. I know you can put oil in the modeling clay that you make to do with kids, and when you do that, you um, it's a clay that you use over and over again, right? Uh, one to three minutes for baking? Okay, that's interesting. And Janine is here. Hi, Janine. How are you? So, guys, this is sort of what I've done so far. I'm wondering if I did put enough, um, uh, how do you say it, the um, flour. But what I'll do is I'm just going to go ahead and form the, form the skull. I kind of don't want to do it too big because I'm worried that it's going to, I'm actually worried that it's going to not, like, cook through. So what if I divide it in half? Let me just divide these two in half, make sure they're about the right size. And then what I can also do is, so you guys know for um, Saturday, is I can find a good recipe for modeling clay. 
I used to cook it on the stove. Okay, because I know when we used to make Play-Doh with kids, uh, you would cook it. Uh, and it would be oil and salt and flour and water, and you would cook it, but then that made a modeling clay that you didn't uh, bake. Like, it was just to play with. It was just Play-Doh to play with, but I don't think we actually uh, used it, like, as a hardened clay. I don't think so. So, anyways, let's just try it. If we do something like this with this clay, I find this one very soft, but... What I'll do is I'll bake it and then I'll let you guys know like how it turns out type of thing. So let's just put them, let's do a couple of these and see. Body lotion. Okay, so what's the body lotion for? I'm, I'm wondering. That's just to make it soft maybe. Because I know with the kids clay that you, you know, it's good to make it like really soft. Uh, so they can just play with it and uh, and reuse it type of thing. It's like Play-Doh, but it's a reusable type of thing. So if we're just going to go around like this, and then after this, I'm going to troubleshoot making some wire ones. I think that would be cute too. And we could do a FEMO one with kind of wire around the outside that I thought would be really cute too. So if we just kind of do a couple little skulls like this, and these aren't as, you know, kind of finished as professional looking as the FEMA ones, but that's okay. So let's just play with this. It helps with the sculpting. Yeah, so the, the body lotion would make it really soft. That would be really cool for sure. So now this, I don't know how well these are going to see. It doesn't make as nice eyes as the... Fimo. I think the Fimo is really a better option and maybe this would have required, yeah, see how soft it is? I'm thinking this might have required some more, um, how do you say, some more uh, flour because it's very, very soft. This one's making, this one looks like a ghost a little bit. See, it's kind of interesting, but it looks more like a ghost than a skull, although it's not too bad. It's kind of fun. I think you could just play with this stuff all day. I remember when when um, Mimi was little, we'd go to play group and we just, the moms would end up playing with all the Play-Doh and stuff. So we could just get in here. I don't think I'm going to get the definition of those teeth, but we're just going to go like that. It's kind of interesting. You know what it looks like is um, munches the, the scream. You know that, that iconic painting that... Uh, Edvard Munch did of the scream. It kind of looks like that. So we're just going to go like that. We'll just play around with this. And uh, like I said, it's a little soft. It's not making the same kind of definition as the other one, but it's certainly interesting. I find it interesting. And we can just kind of sculpt it out like that. The nose got a little a little messed up, but that's sort of the idea. You can play with it. Oh, these look a little evil. I'm not sure I'm loving these ones, but that's the idea. So let me see if I could find a good recipe for this uh, this porcelain clay. That's what my friend used to used to use as well. So if we find a good recipe, I'll put it in the description, and then you guys can do that. Uh, oh, the painting of the screaming man on the bridge. Yes, that's the one. Uh, one Halloween, actually, we we made a, a version of that on a on a uh, canvas, but we cut a hole where the face should go, and then you could take your photo in the painting screaming, and it was really cool. We did that one year. That was so, I'll have to try to find a picture and stick it in the, uh, in, the, in the community section. So here's our crazy little skulls. They're looking a little odd, but they're kind of interesting. They're very Halloween-y. Yeah, so I'm going to bake these, and then we'll see what happens. So when the, when the FEMO comes out, I'll stick those in the um, in the oven, and then I'm going to play around with it. And then what happens if I make some nicer ones? I'll put it in the um, in the community section. They're they're cool, eh? Yeah, <laughs> it never ceases to amaze me. Well, they're they're not perfect, but they're certainly certainly fun. And I think if you make it a little more pointed at the end, it looks a little bit more skull like. And then you can add you can add like paint and that to them as well. So. So let's just get those ready to go. I'm gonna put those in the oven, and now I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna make another FEMO one and put wire around the outside. So let's do that one next. Okay. 
Yeah, that was the other one I wanted to try was just to take a piece of the female and do like a wire outline and then I'll do one in all wires. So cold porcelain clay is air dry clay. Oh, cold porcelain should be air dry. So maybe I shouldn't have put that in the oven. I think my house is gonna uh, smell like um, glue, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'll check it out because otherwise it's gonna take me all week to dry it. So we're gonna see. Okay, so let's just push this around a little bit and we are going to just do like more of a flat version of the skull might be interesting rather than putting the hole in the middle let's see what happens if we do like this type of thing like a more flatter version i don't know if it's a good idea or not but we could do that like a more flat version and then around the outside we would put a wire so like just play around with it like this we'll do the shape first and then we don't have to worry about it getting distorted on the on the wire after but so if we just go to i think this top part has to be a little more kind of bulbous like that so we're just going to go like that and then we can get our our um, wire again and then we're just going to try to do the eyes and the eyes around here and when my other ones are done I'll stick this one in and then the nose okay let's do the eyes and the nose okay and then okay like that and then we'll get our little tool again here's our little tool and we'll do the mouse so we're just going to bring that here and here and then we're going to do the teeth so this this one we're going to do this way, that, 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 five. And then the idea for this was if we don't want to poke a hole in it, the alternative method, and maybe I don't even want to pick it up because I don't want to distort it. So I'm just going to kind of bring it around here, fix that up a little bit. And then if you do a kind of a crease around the outside, let me kind of make a Oh, this one's a little big. So let me just get the 18 gauge one. And I'm just going to bend this up at an angle. Make another little tool that we can use to make an impression, okay? Uh, so we get scared for nothing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me just bring this around here. And then I'll just pick it up so you guys can see what I'm doing. So the idea would be you just make a kind of a impression halfway and this is what is going to happen with this is when you bake it, it's going to make a nice little groove. Oh, there goes my pinger for my uh, other ones. And when you wind it with wire, the wire is going to be able to grab into there to hold in place. Because otherwise it's going to be very hard, hard to wrap with wire if there's no groove to actually hold the hold the wire. I think I actually have a tutorial about how to make a female pendant in this manner. And then this way, you know, when you go to wrap it, you don't have to worry too much about doing fancy wire weaving because there's already a groove in the in the skull to hold the wire in place. And it doesn't have to be super deep. It just has to be deep enough that the wire can grab on there and try to center it the best you can like just around here and then I'll put it in and I'll show you how to wrap it with a wire after so there we have like a little groove that goes all the way around oh there that thing's nagging me again and then this got a little bit distorted so we could just bring that around and then what we're going to do is bake it and then we'll go in after and we will um, put the wire on it. So if you have to fix up, you know, these areas that you did before, you can fix them up a little bit, bring that in. So I'm gonna bake that and then we're gonna get back to it. So let me just put that in the oven. Mark. Okay, clock and Okay, 
So I put those ones on for 15 minutes and they should be okay. Oh, so Mia's on. Were you on earlier, Mia? I didn't see your comments before. Hi. So here's these ones that I just baked and they're, they don't feel like they're super hard, but I think they just have to, I put them in for 15 minutes. I think they should be good. You know what? I might stick them in for another couple of minutes because they don't feel like they're super cooked. So they say 15 mm. minutes for every quarter inch. So I'm just gonna stick them in for another like five or something. Yeah, I just put them in for another five minutes and then we'll go from there. So let's try to do a wire skull. Let me get clean this area up a little bit. I'm going to put some of the Fimo away because when you have Fimo, you want to wrap it up again. So we're just going to wrap that up so it doesn't get dried out. And I'm going to have a lot to clean up after that, but after that, but that's okay. So guys, this was the skull that I did with the beads, but I'm gonna try to do one just with wire and see how it goes. So let me get my wire. I have a new wire, here it is, that I wanna prize uh, for the para wire. It, they have a contest every Wednesday called Wire Wednesday on Instagram. So uh, I got, I won three, uh, spools of wire so I asked them for some 20 gauge silver wire and I like it it's a little soft I find the para wire a little bit soft but uh, it's okay um, personally I prefer the beetle on I find their wire a little bit more sturdy but apparently this one's popular in the states uh, it's more we use more beetle on wire in uh, Canada it's more ready readily uh, available uh, Julie's birthday was last monday cool happy birthday mm -hmm. and crazy cubing dina my birthday was on the third cool everybody's got birthdays i've got mine coming up in november it's a little ways away though november 29th sagittarius so let's try to do like a little skull out of wire I find this this wire is super soft but I just but I want to do it small ish okay we want to do it small ish so we can use it for our skeleton that we're doing on Saturday so this is the one we're doing Saturday and let's see what we can do about making a skull uh, head to go with that so we're gonna just see what we could do and then that way you guys will be ready to go for Saturday and if you like the idea of doing the um, if you like the idea of doing the clay one, you can do that. And or if you could make it to Michael's and get a, a skull, wouldn't that look cute? The skull on the skeleton. So maybe when I, on Saturday, I'll make one with one of these skulls. I find them really cute. And I could do them in different colors because look at all these, look at all these colors they come in. They're so nice. Which color do you like the best? There's yellow orange turquoise purple purple's a little dark you don't really see the details pink red red's a little dark too and green oh and there's even a natural color one in there i didn't even see that one that one's more of a natural color yeah these are really cool you could definitely shape your uh, fimo beads more like this a little more defined like that they're super cute yeah those are really cool okay so let me move this and I am going to love, love, love Parawire. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Tim, what do you love about Parawire? I've only, I've only ever tried three rolls. I got a roll of 20 gauge uh, silver, gold, and green. And like I said, the only problem I find with it, it's very soft. But I mean, it's similar to the artistic wire. It's very similar. Um, but it just is, it's quite soft for, uh, for, you know, some of the things I do. Like when I do, when I do, uh, words, I use this one, which is a brass wire. So para wire might make a brass wire. I should try their brass wire to see because I find the brass wire hold, is more like heavy duty and holds its shape better. So that's a good thing. So yeah, so what I did with this one is I did more like, um, I kind of like that with the teeth, but I think I'm just going to play around with it and see. Um, I don't really have a plan in mind. I think I'll just go ahead and just play with it. So like a simple 
I probably shouldn't have started way down here. I'm going to waste a bit of wire. So let me just start down here. Because one way that I've done skulls before is just to kind of make the mouth out of, uh, and the teeth like this. I did one a long time ago. I kind of forget how I did it now. I'm just going to have to play around because I really do forget how I made the skull before. So we're just going to go see. I use hardware wire. Yeah, and sometimes hardware wire is better because it's sort of a mix of alloys and it tends to be uh, stronger. So, so that's always a good thing. I think how I did my skulls before was I just did like something type of thing like this. And then you could definitely do something. Let me just see if I could do some kind of teeth thing in a way that it's not going to look like strange. Mmm, I just had an idea. Okay, I'm going to try something different. Okay, let me just try this. Okay, I'm going to bring this out here. And this is where you, this is where we get creative and play around, right? So let me just, actually, I'm just going to cut this. Which I shouldn't cut it with my with my pliers, but I do. I'm gonna make a coil. So let me just try this. I'm gonna try this for the teeth. I'm gonna make a little coil. I think it's gonna look cool. So we're gonna take this and around here maybe. Let's just go ahead and make a kind of a coil thing. So we're just gonna go around here and make a coil. You could buy coils like this, but if you need them the right size, just make them yourself. I think this would make cool teeth for the uh, for the skull. So let's just go around here. And actually, hmm, now that I'm thinking about it, we might be able to use the ends of the wire to do other parts of the skull, but I'm not quite sure. Oh, there goes my timer. Just one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I put it on for another 15 minutes for the other Fimo. And so now, and we have full trannies on. Hello. So I've got some clay for making beads. Fantastic. I have a sugar skull tutorial from Nicole Hanna that uses seed beads. Yes. Yeah, the seed beads are cute. Like this one has seed beads for her teeth. Um, but I'm going to try it. Just I just had a thought to try this with the with the spring so I could do I'm gonna try a couple of them I'm just gonna clip it so it's just simply the spring for the um for the teeth okay I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and bring this around and yeah because I made a few different ones but you know none of them I was a hundred percent happy with I did like the one I made for my friend Renee I think it turned out well with all the like I love the flower beads in there but this today I want to make one that's more like kind of a Halloween skull so we're going to see how it's going to go so now what you would want to do is you need the the chin right so let's just bring it I've got all clay stuck to my fingers now so we're going to bring this one down and make like a kind of a chin thing bring this up okay we're going to bring this up here and bring this one. Oh, it's already it's so cool I like it so this here and then just let me think do I bring it back down around or this way sometimes it's better just to go back over your over itself even if it's you know a double wire there just to make it somewhat symmetrical so I just went back over that one like that and we're gonna bring this one like to kind of make the defined cheekbones a little bit and then you want to do some kind of like eyes maybe I should have done a nose thing there I'm gonna have to think about that so if we do some kind of eyes in here and the other thing is you could do a nose I don't know if it would work to do like a nose from let me just see if we do some kind of nose thing from here maybe to try it might look like a clown but we can just try that like that and then bring that one uh, let's see bring it here yeah I like the idea of the nose I don't know if that's going to be perfect but let's just try it if we bring that up again and that way here maybe oh no that doesn't look right 
uh, let me just see. Bring it around here. Bring it around here again, maybe. Yeah, that looks better if we just... Because sometimes it's hard to know, like, exactly how to do these. So if we have one eye like that, it's kind of interesting. And then this one, I have to buy some square wire. Okay. Square wire. What are you going to do with square wire, Mustafa? I've never really used square wire. I don't, uh, I don't think I've ever owned any. I don't think I've ever tried any. But uh, I think there's a lot you could do it. I know a lot of people use half square wire for different things. And now I can't remember offhand, you know, what, what they use it for. But, yeah, so if we go down here, and because I went around that one twice, maybe I'll go around this one twice as well. Okay, we'll just go around this one twice just so they're somewhat symmetrical. So we're gonna go up here a bit, around that one twice. I like the look with the spring. I think it's very, very cool. And then the idea would be you just bring this one around here, like that, and then this one, it doesn't go as smoothly up as the other one, but it's okay. We're just gonna bring it back up around here. There's a bit of a nick there, but it's all right. So we're going to bring that around here. And then we're going to go, just go around. And I guess if you wanted to make it kind of like fuller, maybe you could go around the outside again. I don't know if that would do anything, but we can play with it and see. It doesn't hurt to try, right? So if we go around here and then try to like outline it again, I don't know if it's maybe overkill. Let's just see what we're going to do here. So if we bring that down and around. I uh, wish I had your tell. Oh, this is so sweet. It's just really experimenting to see what works and a lot of experience. Don't forget I've been doing this for 30 years. So I've done a similar skull before, but not like quite the same. Like I never did it with the spring before. So that's interesting. I kind of like the look of it when you double up the wire. As long as it doesn't sort of come apart, uh, that's a good thing. But it just gives it a little bit more depth. And maybe you could even go around three times. I don't know. But I think it's, I like the way, I like the way it looks. It's kind of interesting. And then what you can do is, I'm going to just bring this one around here. I'm just going to go around the ones for now. And then you're going to bend that up at an angle. Okay, up here, bend it up. Okay, I'm gonna have to watch this again. I wanna catch him bits and pieces. No problem, Becca. We're just working up towards the Let's Get Wired on Saturday in which we're doing the beaded uh, skeleton like this guy. And Becca, I wanted to say your skeleton that you did on Facebook was amazing. Oh my God, you know what I loved? Is the idea you did with the little hands that was like that was perfection she made like becca made a wire skeleton and she put like for the hands all all you did was like three little three or four little pieces of wire a uh, cut off and just looped around there and dangling down like fingers i thought it was brilliant oh my goodness it was so good becca if it's okay with you maybe when i do the live on saturday i'll show people the picture of your skeleton uh, in case they want to do that as an option for the fingers of, of their skeleton i think it's a great great idea yeah i thought it was super cool so there we go and that's what i love about that group is we all get ideas from each other and it's really um it's very inspirational you know we're sharing ideas tutorials and all that kind of thing. So here's Skull. It's kind of cool. It's kind of steampunky. And then if you wanted to hang uh, on an earring, I always do the loop like parallel to the skull itself. And then you can, um, if it, you're doing a pendant, you can add a jump ring or you can do the it uh, perpendicular. So we're gonna go like that and we're gonna cut that. And there we have a pretty easy and you might have to like adjust these if they come apart but that's a pretty easy kind of skull 
uh, pendant. So there we go. The coil, isn't it amazing? I love the coil. And Becca says, thanks, go for it. It was not my own idea though. Oh, well, maybe um, if you if you want me to credit another uh, tutorial, just let me know. I could definitely um, put a link to the other tutorial with that, with those fingers in it. Not a problem at all. I'm, I'm all about sharing uh, other artists' ideas and stuff as long as we give them credit. So there is, uh, that one is super cute. And then this was the one with the beads. So that one's that one's super fun too. Let me just pull up the picture of the one that I did for my friend Renee, because that one was really interesting too. It had uh, bugle beads in it. So let me just find it. Uh, yeah, so this was the one I did for my friend a um, couple years ago, and it's got like little spirals there. There goes my telephone. So I guess I'll just let the answer machine get that. And yeah, so there's a better version of it. So I actually did the outline with a thicker wire and then I went in with a 24 gauge wire and added these little bugle beads. So that was really cool. But we can try one now with the little seed beads. That would be cool. So let me just grab some seed beads and we can go from there. I'll just grab them, they're in the drawer. Okay. Okay, so I keep all my seed beads in this bag with all the different, like they all come in these packages. Love the eyebrow. Okay, so the eyebrow, let me just see because I forget now what the eyebrow looks like. Uh, let me see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. The eyebrow, do you mean this one? It sort of looks like an eyebrow, eh? The, uh, the little decoration. Yeah, they're inspired by those skull candy um skulls that you see in mexico they're so uh yeah they're really cool and uh, and decorative so let me just see i already did like white beads but maybe i can try a different color either silver or i have gold maybe i'll do a gold one and i can always try i had some gold pair wire i'm not sure where i put it so let me just see what I have. I also have this wire, but this wire is very soft. So I don't think I'll use that one. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get some other gold wire. So let me just grab my gold wire and see what we can do. Oh, I have it here, yeah. Okay. So it's para wire D. Here's, here's my uh, gold wire. So let me do that. I'm gonna remove some of this other stuff. My table's getting to be a complete mess. There we go, and we're gonna look at those skulls that I baked after. And let's go ahead. I did my looking at your pictures, but with the big flower. Yes, Clarice made a beautiful skull and posted it in the Facebook group too. It was bigger though, eh, Clarice? It was like an ornament. Yeah, that was really beautiful, very nice. If you guys aren't already a member, of the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club, you should definitely join and see all the pics of the amazing stuff that people make. So let's just go ahead and do this one. So if we bring this one up and just start the skull shape like this. Okay, we're gonna bring this up. And then let's try some, get some beads and see what we're going to do. Uh, sometimes it's nice, it's fun, like this one, what I ended up doing was I put one wire one way, one wire the other way, but I think this wire is probably going to be too thick. So let's just go ahead and like bend it here. I'm just going to kind of freeform this thing and we're going to put our beads on there. So maybe we're going to put like four, four beads maybe. Let's just see how it goes. One, two, three, four and bring that across here. Oh, that's maybe too many. Okay, that looks like, yeah, that looks, how many did I put in the original one? Uh, I put four, but it looks like a lot. So let's just put three. And sometimes it's better to use an uneven number. So we've got three there. But the thing is, I don't think this wire is gonna fit back through the other side. No, it's definitely not going to fit through there. So if we bring this here, I wanna to try to make this as simple as possible. So let's bring this, what if we bring this back? Okay, 
And we do like, if we did like a little loop for the nose here, okay, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep this really simple. So we're gonna bring this one around. If we did like a little nose thing, I don't know, it might look like a clown, but we're gonna bring this here. And then we wanna bring it up, but we're gonna hope it's gonna stay in place, right? So we're gonna bring this one out. Okay, we're gonna bring that one here. We could loop it around there. Let me just see if that's gonna work. So if we bring this down here and loop it through, I try to make my things as solid as possible. Otherwise, you know, they're going to like, especially for earrings and stuff, they can come undone when people are wearing them. So I just looped it through there. Seems to have caught well. We're gonna bring that one up here and bring that one out. So already it looks kind of funky. It's a little stylized, but it's all good. And then the skulls seem to have like these exaggerated like cheekbones, right? So we're gonna just bring that one out here. Let me look at a skull again, just to see. I mean, they're all a little bit different. So it looks like the cheekbones go up out just above there. And then we're going to get, looks cool so far, right? Eh? It's kind of interesting. So we're gonna bring this one through here and then this one through here. I think the more like abstract, kind of the more creepy it looks. I kind of like, I'm liking the way it looks. So there's like so far, super simple. And then we're gonna bring that one up here. And I don't want it too round, you know? That's the thing, when things are like too perfect and too round, they just don't really look like natural. So let's make it more, yeah, if we make them more elongated, it's gonna be better because otherwise like they're way, they're way too round. So there we go. We're gonna bring that through there, around there. Let's bring that around. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Ooh. And then we wanna make the top of the skull quite a bit bigger, right? So we're gonna bring this around. Now these would make great earrings and they're super, super simple. So wouldn't that be cool? Just a pair of earrings like this. I have to take some steam. I don't feel so good. Oh no, oh, take care of yourself, Musafa. Yeah, definitely. The steam, is that to clear out your sinuses and stuff? That's, uh, yeah, that's a good thing to do. Or eucalyptus sometimes helps. Yeah, and fresh air helps a lot for sure. So here is, wow, I love this. <laughs> oh my goodness, I really like this. I almost don't wanna do too much to this because I like the way it looks like super simple, right? So, okay, wait, let me just go and get my stuff again and I'll be right back. That's the pinger. I don't know if you guys heard it. Let's see. Okay, so another five minutes because that last one I made was quite thick. I almost forgot about it because we're going to do that one after. So this is so perfect. Yeah, isn't this simple? Oh my goodness, I'm like shocked how simple this is. So then we can just push it, like put this one up so that one will go um, like to hang down, I think just as an earring. I think it's gonna be cool as an earring. So let's just bring that around. And then I guess what you could do if, if you wanted, especially cause sometimes wire earrings are very lightweight uh, so maybe what we could do is just put a bead on it to weight it. It will weigh it down a bit, a bit and it'll make it look cool. So guys, help me out here. What color bead should we put on this? Um, should we just go with like a, a hematite bead or should we put a colored bead? I have hematite, I have red, I have the red miracle bead. I have black, I have purple. So what what color, uh, you guys You guys choose a bead. Hematite, red, purple, or black? Let me know in the comments. Do you have black? I have black, let's just go for it. Perfect. So, and Paula says hematite. Too late, there we go. So we're going to put the black bead on there. A hematite would have been super nice too, for sure. Oh, that's not even black, it's red. Oh, goodness. I can't even see well. And, <laughs> and Paula says hematite. And purple, we have two purples. You know what, I thought that was black and it's not. Cause sometimes when you take it out, there we go, perfect. Here, let's let's see, just, just out of curiosity, we can see what they would look like. Here, let's just, 
the blue the purple one is like that there's purple yeah and then let's just put the black one on there and see hopefully it's going to fit on there there's the black one the hole might be too small yeah sometimes the hole is too small let me just let me just cut this a little shorter here i'll just get to cut it to here so we don't damage the rest of the wire whoop whoop Sometimes there's little glitches with beads and the holes are smaller than the others. They're so right. I like the black. Let's just go with black. A hematite would have been nice too. Purple I found a little a little too cheerful. So we're just going to bring that one over here and bring this one around. Okay. Okay. So let's just bring that around here and then wind it around. Yeah, I think hematite would have been nice too. I would have I would have personally maybe gone for the hematite, but this the black is nice for Halloween. So there we go. Perfect. And then if you had two, it would make cool earrings. So what I'll do is after the live stream, I'll make another one and then we'll have a pair of skull earrings, which were very unexpected and cool. So now guys, let me get these one. These are the ones that we, that we already cooked, right? So let's get these ones and I'm going to see if we could give them a little bit of a texture and we're going to go, I'm going to keep all the things at the side that we've made so we can keep track. And I'm going to get some little bit of black paint and see what we can do with this. But what I want to do is bring over a tray because I don't want to get my, I don't want to get my table all yucky. So there we go. So there's, let me remove some of this stuff. The Fimo. Okay. And if I need water, let me get a little bit of water because we might need some water. Okay, so here's some water and then my other one's going to be ready. So I'll just turn off the timer. Turning off the timer. In three, two, one. Okay, cool. And then we have this one as well that just came out of the oven. So let's do something with these and see what we can do. Okay, so yeah, the FEMO is really cool. I don't know if you saw that part of the tutorial, um, uh, Becca, but this uh, we did that a little bit earlier. And I'm going to let the one cool, and then I'm going to... This one, I put a groove in it, so we're going to surround that with wire. And then for these ones, I have to figure out what I want to do. I'm going to put a little bit of black, because I just want to kind of give them a little bit of texture. Probably what I should have done, which I didn't do, but I would do that if I was to make another one was to make, I should have made little cracks. And then when you put the paint on, it becomes like a little patina. And that would have been really good because it would have, um, I think it's too late now. Like if I tried to, yeah, see if you try to put cracks in now, it's too late, but maybe when it's warm, no, it's too late. But I could have put little tiny fra uh, cracks in there and then it might've worked. So let's just see. Like if we get the paint, I don't want to ruin this, but you know what? This is our opportunity to try things and to see if they actually work. So I'm going to have this. I want to get a cloth so I can rub off the extra. So let me get a little cloth. Okay. This is our tea towel, but it's black, so nobody's going to notice. So there we go. So we're just going to take this. And if we just put, hmm, this is maybe too watery. But the idea would be you put a little bit of paint and then you just like cover it with the paint. Okay, and then maybe I should have put like more concentrated paint and we stick that, like especially in the eyes, right? You wanna get a little bit of paint in there. Okay, but this then you wanna rub it off right away or the details won't show. So if you just, Go ahead, it's like adding a patina to something. So you just go ahead, play around with it, 
and then maybe those are like too dark in there. I'm not sure, but you could definitely play around with it. I'm going to just clean my brush and maybe like clean these out a little bit. And this is the part where you get, you can get really creative and you can just play around with it and see what works. Like if you need to take paint out, just go ahead and wet your brush and just go in there. And this is just, just to give it a little bit of interest and a little bit of detail. And you can just play around with it. Just kind of like touch it up and stuff. It just makes it like, Clarice would know, Clarice, do you, do you do makeup and stuff too? I know you do like cosmetology stuff, but it's like doing makeup, you know, to, to, to define like the areas and stuff. So let me just see if I can do it. Like, so you want your shadows to be more shadowy and you want your highlights to be more highlighted. So, and then if there were cracks, they would show up. So this is just, you know, you can play around with it you know, use your artistic eye and see how you can make it a little more interesting. Just play. I think it would have been really cool if there was some, um, if there was some uh, cracks, it would have, they would have really shown up well. So we can just play around with it and see. He's getting a little splotchy there. But in the, in the teeth too, like if you can just kind of define the teeth a little bit, I think it looks cool. So wherever, you know, there's a, wherever there's uh, uh, like a crease type of thing, then you're going to have darker areas. So it's it's like any time you put a patina on something. Paint wash. What's paint wash? I'm not quite sure. This is acrylic paint, so it works quite well. You could probably do, we used to do the same thing when I did embossing with kids with foil. We used to use um, uh, ink, like, like um, just regular like black ink. And uh, you could also probably use Sharpie, like in a pinch, you could probably use some Sharpie. So that's the idea, just play around with it, uh, do what you can do, and then you see it looks quite different from the one that has not been uh, painted. So that's an idea. So now what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and try to surround this one with a wire, because this one doesn't have a hole through it, but I did a crease. Liquid eyeliner, now there's a good idea. If I had any of that, I don't have any makeup, so I don't have any liquid eyeliner, but that's a great idea. So now I'm gonna just get a piece of the wire. This is 20 gauge, and little diamonds on their eyes and eyeshadow, cool, that's so cool. So now we're going to take this piece and we're gonna surround it with the wire. So basically all you're gonna do is go in the crease Okay, just go in the crease like this, bring it out and bring it in here. And then this side, bring it around here. I'm being too careful with this. I should just go for it. So we're just going to bring it in here, across here. And then basically you're just going to bend it up in the center point of the, um, of the skull. So we're just going to bring it up here in the center point, bring this around so it's centered, and then we're just gonna wind it around one or two times, okay? So we're just gonna wind it around there. And this is just another way to do it if you don't wanna put a hole through the bead, if you just wanna make more of a flat cab type of thing. So we're just gonna go here, and then we can do our loop, either perpendicular or parallel. I'll do it perpendicular. That way you can put it straight on a necklace wire. We're going to bring it around here and then just bring that around a few times. Perfect. And we're just going to cut it. So here we have, it's nice and securely in place. The wire stays in the, in the crease like that. And then you can go ahead and paint it if you like. So we'll get our paint. Okay, I don't have acrylic paint. Yes, so definitely the eyeliner is a great option. Um, I'm trying to think, of, yeah, the eyeliner, maybe Sharpie, ink, uh, there's all kinds of things. Maybe you could even get a black pen and open it up and just be, wear gloves please, and open up the little thing and then just use that with a little paintbrush or something. So let's just try to darken up the eyes a little bit 
We'll just do a little bit again of this. Just kind of paint it out a bit. And then the sides too, you could do that too. But before it gets too dry, you should probably go ahead and um, get your, your little cloth and then bring it and just kind of like highlight some areas. This, this cloth is a little big. I should have got like a little finer cloth or something and this go around. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get really fussy about it, you can go ahead and put like highlight areas with white paint and stuff. So I think it's just a matter of playing around with it to see what looks best. And, and I like the teeth when they have quite a bit in there just to get it. And then I would definitely recommend trying to do some like little cracks and stuff. I think that would be super cool as well. I'm just going to get that in there. And I mean, these are just my first tries. I think there's a lot of potential with this. I think we can do a lot of different things to uh, to do the skull beads and, um, or you can just buy them, you know, that's the other option. But I am gonna try to find some good recipes for the homemade uh, uh, clay stuff. I think that could be really good to try to make some of the homemade clay. I think it's a good idea. I like that idea of like kind of buffing it up in places. When you, when you do that, when you have nice lights and darks, you really get an idea of um, a 3D kind of effect type of thing. So if you add a little water, rub it out a little bit, yeah, it makes it much more 3D. And then once it's dry, once the paint's dry, you can always put a coat of varnish on top. So we could, but maybe I could get like a Q-tip or something and buff it up. So that's pretty well it. I'm gonna show you guys what we did. I'm gonna remove this stuff, put that at the side. I have a big cleanup today. So we've got that. So today we made the little skulls, the little um, Fimo skulls. These are the Fimo skulls. This one's not painted, this one's painted. I made this Fimo skull that's more like 2D or 3D but flatter with the little, the little line through it. We made this one that was uh, just all wire, which is really cool with the coil. I love that one. And then this one, which is going to be earrings with the, um, with the seed beads. And let me get the other ones that I did with the homemade clay. I don't know if they turned out too well, but, oh no. Yeah, the homemade clay, you guys, was a bit of a fail. Look, they got all closed in. The eyeballs got all closed in and stuff. So I don't know if we can fix that. Let me just see. I think it was too soft. I think that was the trouble. It was way too soft. Look, it's still so I can still manipulate it. So maybe you can just, and it might crack, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing because I was hoping for cracks at some point. But yeah, see, this isn't even fully dry but this one's like hard here. So yeah, I'm thinking the homemade clay is tricky. Let me try to find a decent recipe, but for sure the Fimo ones uh, work really, really well. And then all wire or the beads. So on Saturday, we will put our beads together and make a little skull. So that's coming up on Saturday at noon. Let me flip the screen. Looks like a human face. Yeah, a little bit, eh? Yeah, it almost looks like a mummy or something, which isn't a bad thing either. So let me just flip the screen. There we go. Perfect. So that's it, guys. Thank you for holding out. Uh, we we're an hour late today, and we'll um, definitely see you on Saturday at noon for Let's Get Wired. That's going to be fun. We'll, uh, we'll be sharing pictures in the Discord group. And actually, hop over to Discord if you want to see... Um, uh, Alman, you said you shared a little gadget for making uh, twists. So let me just see. We have Heather read my other two comments. I answered your question about square wire. Oh, okay. So let me go back. Do, do, do. Let me see. Was that far back? You were answering questions about the square. That was a while back, I think. Let me just see. Mm -mm -mm. Tim, skull is awesome. Thank you. 
Uh, what? You never use square wire. Square wire for wrapping gemstones, crystals, square wire makes everything look more expensive. Ooh, that's cool. Awesome. Well, maybe I'll have to try some square wire one day and see. That sounds, that sounds like a lot of fun. Cool. Awesome. So everybody have a wonderful rest of the day or rest of the night. And we'll see you in the Facebook group. We'll see you in the Discord group. And we'll definitely see you on Saturday. So thanks for hopping on. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye.